Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bar ahabatu fillah The question was asked Assalamu alaikum akhi You mentioned it's best to attain skills in your youth In order to do hijra as it will help you Can you please elaborate on this topic? And as you mentioned that is a whole nother story What do you advise the youth to attain skills that will help them to go to Saudi, Kuwait and other Muslim countries for hijra? Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa staghfiruka liman a'lamu So first and foremost, ahabat tifillah As far as skills, I'm going to be as brief and direct as possible So, what I would say is First and foremost, as far as making hijra <coughs> that it's important to prepare, prepare with your wealth. Uh, and as I mentioned, it is much, it will make things much more easier for you. Uh, obviously, if you prepare, prepare either with wealth, with wealth, and bi'idnillah with some skills, employable skills, or better yet, business, business skills. And my advice is business is to encourage the youth in general regardless of whether preparing for hijra or otherwise is to prepare for freedom economic freedom and that comes with being independent and being in business for yourself which is not easy and probably not for everyone however I do advise the youth to strive and gain those skills and those skills are not necessarily learned in universities and otherwise and so it's very important to learn responsibilities and learn how to manage your money and learn about investment and learn about how to conduct business. This is what I advise because the reality is, especially in the countries you mentioned as far as Saudi and Kuwait, the Gulf countries in general are closing the ranks. They're expelling expats literally by the millions. And not thousands, millions, when we look at all the countries, for sure. Saudi, I mean, in the past, since 2015, how many millions of expats have left for various reasons. And they're rapidly uh, changing the situation. So they're not really, there is no open arms for Hijra. Be, be uh, re real with, uh, I just want you to have a real, realistic picture that, what I advise a lot of brothers who come here that are workers and stuff like this, I say, hey, come here with one of two goals or both goals. To save money or to seek knowledge or do both. And that's what I advise people because real the reality is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, there isn't really much stability here in general in the job market. Things are changing and they want you out, plain and simple. They have to employ their citizens, and as I said, those are whole other issues that we don't really need to go into, but what we do need to look at is related to your question. So, if you, what I advise as far as for coming to these particular countries, if, if you really have your heart set on going to the Gulf countries, especially to Saudi, uh, Bilad al-Tawheed, then you need, I, I think, what's more appropriate and what's much better for longevity, for a longer term uh, prospects is business and I can't tell you what kind of business but I would just say those are the kind of things and I that research is up to you so another point I want to mention as far as hijra in general research the country that you have in mind if you have mind you want to go to Yemen when Yemen be in the in the future gets stable or if you want to go to Mauritania or if you want to go to Sudan or you want to go to Indonesia or you want to go to Malaysia Malaysia, or you want to go uh, wherever, or one of the very, you know, uh, uh, to Egypt or what have you, do your research, do your homework. Know about the country, know about what it takes to live in those countries, know about the lifestyle, the living standard, and the quality of living as far as for you, especially for you, if you have a family. And if you don't have a family, you still want to have a good picture of where you're going and you want to prepare yourself 
especially if you're preparing to really make hijra and go for longevity. And look at their laws. Are they um, countries that are open for you to make permanent residence? And there are many countries that are that is not the case. So those are things to keep in mind. And what I advise a lot of the youth uh, when they're asking about certain these questions, I also say don't close the door to Talib al -il. You know, for some people, and me, I never had the, even though I probably was kind of between things, but I never, when I left America, I did not think I was not going to come back. I was not making hijra. For me, it was about uh, seeking knowledge and then going back. But it just turned out that I lasted, outlasted many people who tried to make hijra. And so what I would say is, is, uh, you know, prepare yourself, uh, attain knowledge about what you're trying to do. And I do encourage people, and even some of the ulama, they mention, because of some of these difficulties, mention, you know, having your intention upon Talib al -ilm, you know, going to seek knowledge and then going back to your country or going back to another place where you may find uh, more happiness as far as practicing your religion. You may find it easier. You might find it easier in an African nation, whether it's Muslim or not. You might find it in another nation that just has a large uh, Muslim population, but is still not Muslim, but you can practice your religion better in that country than your previous country of birth or whatever. So those are all things to consider when it comes to the issue of making hijra. And as I mentioned, being independent is very important. Having the ability to move and having the ability to do what you need to do, and that comes through business. When you work for another man, regardless of who that man is and where he is, then you lose a lot of your autonomy. And especially, unfortunately, in many of these countries, they do not, uh, you know, they have a different concept and different mindset about uh, controlling individuals, plain and simple. So in the workplace, you know, it's a different model than you would be accustomed to in the West. And... I know many nightmare stories, and there's some good stories too, but I know many nightmare stories of people who've lived here and had terrible issues with their employers and almost an imprisonment type situation. So what I would say is it's very important to be independent. And this is what I advise the youth, to strive to gain skills. And if, and if it is that you're working for people, gain skills that are marketable. Gain skills. If you're an engineer, if you're a lawyer, if you're something like this, you're a professional. You can take your skills anywhere and uh, and probably benefit. And if you can start a business in your home country, then that's even better to where money is coming in steadily and you are doing talab al or living in a country in which you want to reside. So that's another option as well. So those are those are just some uh, some. Uh, pieces of advice that I can offer and we hope that they are beneficial and we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inama a'malu bin yad wa inama likulli imriyin manawa faman kanan hijjatu illallahi wa rasulihi fa hijjatu illallahi wa rasulihi the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said verily actions are tied to the intentions and everyone should get that for which he intended therefore he who migrates for Allah and his messenger then he has migrated for Allah and his messenger and he who migrates to take uh, some woman in marriage or for some worldly gain, then he will get that for which he intended. And so we know that the intention is very important, especially when it comes to hijra, and especially when it comes to talib al -ilm, both. They require, uh, to get the ajr from Allah, Azza wa Jal, they require uh, a t intention, and they require struggle and sacrifice, because they don't come, as Imam Muqbil said, and it's a statement of the Salaf, uh, لا يأتي العلم براحة الجسد. Knowledge doesn't come by being comfortable in your body. So, you have to realize that these are path, path, uh, paths of sacrifice. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.